He, of course, a late replacement. Everything for him, just being here, is a bonus. And I just get the feeling he might well prosper. Ariohi wins the leg. Well, that lag wasn't even close, call boys. Yeah, it's a funny Thank old you, shot, Frank. the lag shot. You think it can be easy, Mario. but you've always got pre-match nerves, and it's not easy rolling that cue ball up and down near that rail. So Mario gets this match underway. Nine balls going close. But it's not going... He's got a shot at this three ball. There's a bit of distance. Very, very tidy player indeed is Mario. I mean, five or six Euro tours, they're never easy to win. Won the World Cup of Pool with Albin. That's a good opening shot. And when you've got an orthodox repeat technique like him, that's half the battle. Often when you play nine ball, there's always one or two shots in a rack where if you get past that, it sets you up for a nice table layout. And that's what Mario's done here after pocketing the red three. Careful here though, pace is going to be key. You can see he's drawing off that side rail. Looks a little shy of pace this. This is going to be a lot thinner. Extension, Extension than please. The camera shows you. So he's got to bear down on this one. We saw from Scarlett Woodward in our first match that you can't avoid or you can't afford to hit that near jaw with a cut into that bottom Mario pocket, he. but Mario he cut it in beautifully and then the nine ball after that was a formality. So Mario he, not just a fine pool player, he's also a really good chess player. What are his moves here in Gibraltar? It is an experience for sure, so I know the stage. I kind of like it to play on a TV table. Some people get nervous, but I really like it and I'm excited to play on it. To win it would be great, but first of all, I just focus, try play my game, you know, focus on playing my best game I can play and enjoy it. I like tight pockets. Um, I like it a lot. Um, usually I don't practice on tight pockets, but I always enjoy to play it on, on, on tournament. And I think it's the right way to play on tight pockets and not on bigger pockets. Dimitri Jungo, he's a calm, relaxed player, experienced and also a very dangerous table uh, player when it's getting close. The list of the players is awesome, you know, so many good players and you can't say that uh, anyone can't beat anyone, you know, it's like everyone can beat everyone and it's gonna be a great tournament. Mario, Mario 27 in the nine ball Leading rankings. Dimitri Ungo, 33rd. So not much between them by that measure. But I think in terms of big TV experience and success, you have to make he favourite call. Yeah, he won the World Cup of Pool, hasn't he, with Albin? Twice. Lost in the final. So he's used to this arena, as he just said in his interview. Can he do it on his own? You just feel it's a case of will it happen for Mario? So it was a good last minute call up. You're almost shocked to see he wasn't in the original list of 24 that have made it here this year. This year's Masters. 
Yes, he's had a pretty good year. He was third very recently in the Pro Players Championship in Pennsylvania, just outside Philadelphia. Fourth in the Derby City Classic, nine ball. He was third in the European Championship of straight pool and runner-up in the European 8-ball championship to 53-year-old Ralph. Okay. Great story, that Ralph coming good. The man who's won the World Masters more than anyone else six times, and now he's 53 years of age and still lifting trophies. Well done, Ralph. Great story. Yeah, six-time Masters champion. Not easy to win this event, to win it six times. That is special indeed. Pace is key here. This looks okay. Yeah, nice shot. Well judged. Doing well here with the pace of the table. You always expect the first round matches. Players not to be fully settled in. Get a good view of his cue action there. Cues the ball nice, does Mario. This is the harsh reality of the Masters. Dimitri loses the lag. He's got the best seat in the venue at the minute. He's just watching Mario run racks. It's not inconceivable, Carl, that someone could lose the lag and actually not get a shot. It can definitely happen. You just don't really see it. I actually would like to see somebody do it. As we're watching Mario, this would be his second break and run. Yeah, that's perfect. Using two rails. Mario, hey. Wins the second. Perfection so far from Mario He. Two break and run outs. Dimitri Youngo being kept quiet, but thankfully, when we spoke to him before the match, he wasn't quiet. It is my uh, first invitation in this uh, tournament, and uh, yeah, I'm very exciting. I'm not here only for. Uh, yeah, taking part of it, I really uh, have a goal uh, when I come here and uh, I have to have my good days. I really uh, enjoy it that uh, the pockets are more tight, especially um, the game will change a little bit. There will be maybe more safeties uh, we have to play and uh, that's what I like. Mario is uh, for me one, one of the best players uh, in the world. Um, I know him very good. I know how strong he is, but uh, I also know that I have my chance uh, to win if I play my game. And uh, yeah, I look forward uh, for this game. It really is amazing and good to hear that almost universally the players are commending the decision to adopt these four inch pockets. They are tighter, it puts more onus on accuracy, but they all love it. Yeah, I mean, there's always been a big discussion about the pockets, and obviously, I'm from England, and you know, we all know what snoop is right. about. And, you know, a lot of the people who are leading to, 2 0 You know, they still think the pockets are, are big, but they don't really appreciate what the game is about. It's a flare game, you've got to be flamboyant, confident, you've got to go for the bank shots, the jump shots, and as we say that, the nine ball, it just got flicked at the last minute, it was going to go in. Yeah, and if you, if you make the pockets extremely tight, you take away what the game of nine ball is about. <laughs> So I think four inches is still good enough for the players. And it's good enough for us watching. But at least Dimitri's going to get out of his chair now. It, well, unless Mario's feeling super adventurous, but you would think he's going to be playing a push out. That's what he's doing here. He's down the bottom end of the table, just push out having court. a look. Where he wants to float this cue ball. If you've never seen nine ball before, after the break, you can play a push out, and that is basically what Mario is doing now. He's going to roll the cue ball. You can do what you want. So there you see, he just bumps Dimitri, into the six. Your choice. Leaves distance. Now Dimitri, he can have a play this shot. 
If he doesn't like it, he can, he can give it back to Mario. It's always a fascinating thing, the old push out. Try and tempt your opponent into something a little bit special and often if you don't fancy it, what usually happens is you like now you think the safety shot, oh I don't really like the look of this and so we'll give it back to Mario. Mario and usually what happens is Mario will get down and lock him up in jail. And you're thinking, why didn't I play that shot, Phil? Yeah, it's all about judging what you don't want to play yourself, obviously, if you put back in, but also a shot that your opponent might fancy or otherwise. The one crystal clear thing is if you're playing someone who isn't good at jumping, sometimes you, you play to a jump extension, to leave them that shot please. where you would feel happy jump yourself, but they wouldn't. Yeah, or if you were playing somebody who was, you knew that, that there was a little bit weaker than you and there wasn't a, a, a good pocketer of the ball, you could maybe push out into a long shot. And then often they wouldn't fancy it, Phil, so you'd get down and you'd just roll it in and you'd give them a little look and just wink as if to say, you should have took that shot on yourself. So this time, Dimitri put Mario back in his work. So this is a good decision. He's going to be feeling a little bit edgy, he said, didn't he, in his, in, his, in his interview. It's the first time he's played in the Masters. Had an anxious moment there, Youngo, as the two ball was coming towards the pocket on his last visit. Thought he might have been the victim of a fluke, but the, the two didn't find gravity. Tricky shot, this, because he's bridging over the brown seven. And he's got to try and hit it thin enough to get past that eight. And often when you play, play this, the cue ball spins on a brand new table. I think he's going to be delighted with the outcome. Didn't play to bunt the eight. So it was a poor shot, but it's worked out well. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he was trying to play for this green six into the other corner where he's looking at now. I'm sure he's been trying to pop the purple five and the green six in the same pocket. So he's got to be a little bit careful here. Speed is key. This shot is all about the speed. Doesn't need to get too silly. He's landed close to his work there, so. Be a little thinner than that look, so I don't know if he can play this and hold the cue ball. Can he's got to go up table and back down, and with the eight and the seven there, you can often crash the cue ball into one of them. So, yeah, that tells me this is pretty thin. Extension, extension, please. And also, when cue ball and object ball are so close together, it really is tough to judge the potting angle. he's gonna well it looks like he's playing it low is he playing this with low right spin yeah this was the problem you always felt like he may bump into one of the balls and it's actually worked out okay the nine balls close enough to the rail so as long as he hits he just doesn't need to hit in between the nine and the rail I think that's the only way he could maybe miss it but this is a this is a great chance. Dimitri Jungle wins the third round. What a nice way to open your account. He did not get a shot in the first couple of racks, but in the third, he started the process of recovery. Mario He's lead reduced to 2-1.
It is the World Pool Masters, and what a stunning location has been chosen for this tournament. We've returned to Gibraltar. The views are simply out of this world, and this venue, the Europa Point Sports Park, is located in an extraordinary position right at the edge of the peninsula. Indoors, we're watching some extraordinary pool. Skylar Woodward has beaten Oliver Sholnocki 7-3, so he's into the last 16. Mario V trying to join him there, leads Dimitri Jungo 2-1. Dennis Grabber, Loho Sum, Jason Shaw, Mieska Fatunski still to come. Nice cue ball control there from Dimitri. That's what the players will be trying this week. To park the cue ball in the centre of the table. That gives you a good look at all the table after the break shot. Very difficult thing to do that, park the cue ball, that's what we call it. Doesn't look like Dimitri can see the potting angle though. Eight ball looks like in the way of a cross bank, so that's not an option. And the push out doesn't look easy, so push. often players push out, might man. try and tie a ball up. Yeah, he's not, he's not tying a ball up. Not Mario, too sure. It's your option. Many a player might have pushed the brown seven on that pink four. That gives you a little bit of insurance. So he's keeping the game open. Quick, so he spotted something. Trying to bank the one ball off two rails up towards the center of the top rail. That's a job well done. Good shot. Yeah, and while the push out in the third rack definitely worked in favor of Jungo, you get the impression that this one might not. Because the cue ball is on the rail, that takes away a lot of the things Dimitri can do with the cue ball. Oh, this is a fine effort. Yeah, the one ball's near the pocket, but it was hard for that not to happen. He's left Mario a jump shot. But at least Dimitri's, you know, he's making Mario play a shot. He was in a tricky position there. Yeah, three balls to hide behind, but had he made a, a thinner contact or a thicker contact, that could have been very expensive. Now, where's this one? Ooh, so, so close. Much like the nine ball off the break in the previous rack. He will be disappointed because at this level, the players, they, they will fancy jumping that ball in. bigger pocket table Phil that one might have gone in you know in that corner I had another look on the replay just to see and that might have gone in so from this type of angle on a four inch table they're just not going to go in anymore okay there you can sort of play a little stun shot just get the cue ball back off the rail a little bit playing for the purple five in the right side pocket Just release through, cue ball 
centre of the table. He'd like that to run a little bit more. Uh, he's got a decision to make. Because I don't think he can just sort of play this pocket speed and hold the cue ball. He's either going to have to spin yeah. this in Extension, with a bit please. of left, go two rails, so the cue ball goes above the left side pocket, or he might play it with a high ball, showing the top left, but he's aiming low. Oh, is it this nice? That will settle him down. This is the first time he's ever played in the Masters. As the sixth ball goes in nice and clean, and the speed was good. That was good decision making as well. He didn't want to try and force that seven ball in, which can cause the miss. So he took his medicine, gave himself a shot on this eight ball. Done well here. Two down, no shots. And now he's about to tie this match back up. Good start for Dimitri. And this nine ball to settle it down. Dimitri Jungle wins the rack. Yes, the two push out racks have not been kind to Mario He, and that's because Dimitri Jungo has pulled back onto level terms. Okay, buddy. As you say, Carl, he's making his debut in this event, and there's a certain mentality when you come into a, a really prestigious tournament like this, and it's single elimination. He wants to make his mark. He got to the last 16 of the World Championship this year, so clearly he's in stroke. 39 years of age now, and he was a very highly rated junior all those years ago. As for Mario He, well, he's won four times on the, the Euro Tour, including a couple of victories in his native Austria. Now, there's no more pressure than trying to do well on home soil. And partnering Alban Auschen, twice Austria have won the World Cup of Pool. That's such a tough tournament to win, Carl. You came very close, didn't you, recently? Everything has to fall into place. Yeah, I have won it as well, Phil, let's not forget. Oh, I knew that, Robson. <laughs> you came close recently. Yeah, that was unbelievable last year. Didn't quite get that fairy tale ending, though. Get him. Yep. There's Thank a lot of break. players in this year's it's event piece. where... Dimitri Younger to break. I wouldn't say the nearly men, because they've won tournaments, but there's like Here winning goes. Euro tours and certain open events, and then there's the next level up. The World Pool Championships, the World Masters, the US Open. So there's a lot of players like these two men at the table just trying to win that big, big singles title. This is a horrible shot he's faced with. They'll be having a go though. Full length. If he pots the two, the cue ball's going to be coming back over towards the three, so you feel he's going to have some type of shot. This is not an easy pot, though. Green six looks like it's tied up with the seven, so there's a bit of an issue there. Yeah, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy at all. Now, Jungo will know that that green six might help him. Looks disappointed there, but we can all miss them. And that 
looks like it's landed a little bit funny. Potting it into the left center, cue ball. And it looks like it's going to be running up towards towards that five ball, maybe even towards the seven. So if he does play that, he might have to play the cue ball in between the gap with left English. Can he draw it? Extension, and please. He can't really play it in the top left. That will be a little bit too thin. So he's going in the side. Yes, yeah, so he was running into them balls. And he's lucky to have a shot here. It's not an easy shot, and it's not going to be easy getting on the purple five, but it could have been worse. The opposite spin on this cue ball, and he might well have been hooked. But they see the spin just taking effect, and he's OK. To get good on this, he's got to power this ball in. Well, that makes the pot harder. Yeah, there you see. Where's this going to finish? It's going to be OK for Jungo. The six ball and the seven are now open. Those big expansive shots on these pockets. Yes, they are possible. But they require so much more accuracy and consequently players get down and... Extension, please. It can be quite daunting. The players who have got a really good cue ball they're the type of players that are going to do well in this year's event what I mean by that is when you watch a pool player run rack after rack after rack and it looks easy because their cue ball is always perfect because their position is, that's what you're going to need this week because you're not going to keep pulling off pots like Mario he just missed you just can't do it another miss now how fortunate has he been here can Mario see an edge if he can see an edge of this five it might be okay if he's full ball hooked well it may be your lucky night Demetra and he is full ball hooked That last little flick has just helped Mario out immensely because he can't draw the cue ball back. So how do you get from the purple five to the green six? Incredible what you see on a pool table. That last little nudge has just changed this shot so much. Well, this is turning into a bit of a uh, car crash pool at the minute. Well, this is only the fifth rack, and that's the sixth Miss Pot. A little bit of inexperience there from Dimitri. The chances of potting that clean and, you know, getting the cue ball off three, four rails. Well, good luck with that one. He may have been better trying to play a, a telling safety. It's called six missed pots so far in the match, and when you think the first two racks were clean, break and run out. Yeah, you can often get faced with some horrible shots at this game. You see, you're playing number to number, so there's often never a lot of hiding places. Cue ball's going to be travelling here again. He's lost a cue ball here. This is no good. He's going to have to bank this. He's got to play the as well you feel in the bottom left he'll go close to this already used his 30 second extension Mario here in this rack so has to get a move on the clock is ticking 30 second shot clock in operation of course he's snipping it into the left just caught the rail 
Not this week, Mario. They're not going to go in anymore, buddy. Yes, in our first match, Scarlett Woodward played a thin cut on the, the brown seven ball into the opposite bottom pocket of this. That caught the near jaw and refused to drop, and he suffers the same fate. Well, this rack is not over yet, Phil. Because he's not got good on the nine there. He's left it a little bit short. If you catch the right rail now, I don't think it's going to fall. Dimitri Jungo wins the right. Just about scrambled in. 3 2 Jungo after being 2 0 down. But, Carl Boys, that was rather a scruffy rack, wasn't it? Yeah, it was incredible, really. It'd have been a good hill hill rack, that one. But it can be expected from these guys. Of twists and turns in a single rack. Rack six, Dimitri Jungo to break, leading 3-2. Can Jungo make it four racks on the trot? Looks a decent break. But it's going to be a safety shot on the two ball. You can see the blue two is on the left side of the table. There's no bank shot on. Does have nice options here though. He first looked at playing the two ball down on the bottom rail near the diamond. And just get the cue ball over towards the top right end of the table. He's just got there, you know. Delightful safety shot there from Dimitri. It's key to make sure you get that two ball on the rail like he did. Not quite got the hook. Extension, Extension please. Striking down on this. Now this is a chance for Dimitri. It's a tricky pot. But it is a chance. Extension called. When it comes to taking an extension, this shot is perfectly suited for it. A time when you have to compose yourself because you realise this is potentially a shot.
couldn't fault the pot. <sighs> and what a kiss. What a kiss, Cole. Yeah, he did the first part of the job well there. He knew he just had to pop the ball. Just kind of what would happen with the cue ball. And that is a very generous nudge indeed. Good pot, though. shot indeed using the second rail he knew if he got the cue ball off that second rail just bounce it out into the table you're always going to leave yourself a shot on the purple five <sighs> could play for the brown seven in the left center or he could play for the brown seven in the same pocket as the five that's what he chose to do It's a great name, isn't it? Dimitri Jungo could be a, a Bond villain with that name. Tonight he's trying to get to 007 wow. first. Seven racks, and if he gets to four, he's more than halfway there. But that was a mistake. Yeah, he wasn't playing for this yeah. pocket. He was playing for the top left. But luckily, it has run far enough up the table to make this, I wouldn't say unmissable, because the cue balls, it's all about the cue ball. Oh, he's played this well. He's played this really well. Dimitri Jungo wins.
Thank you, Dimitri. Yep. Interesting match, Thank this. Thank you, seventh rack. Dimitri, you're going to break. Leading 4-2. Our referee from Germany, Marcel Eckhart, announcing the start of the seventh rack. And it's starting to become a little serious for Mario He. He made an ideal introduction. But things have turned around very much in Dimitri Jungo's... Lost the cue ball a little on the break. Then it got kissed up towards the top. Funny, really, when you're sat in your chair and it's not your shot. Glance at the table and... Just looking at where the mistake might come from. From your opponent. This isn't easy. He's having a look at the pot, though, I believe. Down the rail. Extension, Extension called. Maybe he's decided to try and draw the cue ball up behind the two. Well, that was close. He feels like that should have gone in. And and that's the other thing with these tight pockets. When you do go close and don't quite see the ball drop, they hang there. Yeah, I don't know if he tried a two-way. I don't know if he was trying to bank the one in that corner or if he was just trying to get it down near the corner but the problem was played a bad cue ball didn't get the cue ball high enough did he now Mario was back at the table in these short race to sevens these situations where you just can't afford mistakes and that was a poor shot it's got to bear down on this one you can see the cue ball here Trying to pull it back in a straight line. Next answer, please. And he didn't pop the two clean in the centre of the pocket. So he's going to be striking down on the cue ball a little bit. He's going to play this with right hand spin. Oh, nice shot. Nice shot. Looking at the cue ball intently there. This was a really good pot. It was really important also for the cue ball to bounce off that side cushion, which it has done, and now it should be plain sailing. Mario He wins the wreck. That was for Mario He, much needed. He's within one, and of course he's breaking off in rack eight. All of the players here trying to join the, the Whirlpool Masters Roll of Honour. That's a man who has done it on more than one occasion. David Alcady, twice his name appears on this coveted trophy. Look at the role of honour in recent years. The likes of Dennis Socolio from the Philippines. Ralph Suke in 2011. That was his sixth victory in this tournament. A record. Karol Skowerski won in very emotional circumstances in Kiel to Poland on home soil. Niels Feyen, he was a winner. Shane Van Boning 
went back to back in Nottingham and then Manchester in 2014-2015. Al Qaeda, his victories came in 2017 and 2019. The last of them in extraordinary circumstances when he doubled the the nine ball length of the table to overcome Alexander Kazakis. And in between in 2018, Niels Fyan prevailed. Kazakis, though, he had his redemption, didn't he? Whitewashing Shane Van Boning in the final 9 0 last year. Back at the eighth, Freck. Now you're here to break. Yes, David. We Trailing are talking forfeit. about you. Now yeah, can Mario He get back all square? Oh, this looks a nice break. Well, the two ball won't go past that green six. So he's got no shot here. It's going to have to be a safety shot. He won't play the combination. I know that camera angle makes it look like that shot is on, but it's not. This is the type of situation his buddy Albin Ocean is very good at. Often, Albin can extension. Extension call. play these safety shots and gets the hook more times than he does. This is what Mario needs here. He needs a good safety. He could just push the two ball to the right hand side and maybe try and use the nine ball. Looks like he's bouncing the two round the table. This is this is no good indeed. What has he played there? That is an absolute shocker. Well, we're always looking for the shot of the session or the match. I think that's the worst shot of the session so far. I think in the end, he's just overthought the shot. Just try and keep it as simple as you can. Extension, please. Yeah, Dimitri's taking a bit of time here because the cue ball after potting the two, he's going to run into the red three. And this is why he's striking down on the cue ball. Oh, what a shot he's played there. That was a very, very nice shot indeed. And now Mario Hees, awful safety, looks like costing him the rack. Making your first appearance in any tournament in an alien environment is never easy, especially against top-class opposition. But Dimitri Ungo has to be pleased with the way things are going. On the other hand, Mario He must be disgusted with that attempt at containment. Talk about backfiring, Carl. Yeah, it's going to cost him the rack, isn't it? This nine ball... Dimitri Younger wins the wreck. For someone so experienced as Mario He, that safety was a real question mark. Why, oh why, you must be thinking, why did I execute it so badly? Why did I select it in the first place? It is 5-3. So 
Well, the story of that rack call was basically one very important and very badly played shot. That was a tidy shot from Dimitri. Yes, after the, the safety blunder. Youngo, once he played the, the two ball nicely and dropped on the three, always looked likely to extend his lead. So Mario, he finds himself in something of a spot of bother. His opponent needs only two racks to triumph. He needs four. Can you remember your debut in the Whirlpool Masters, Cole? Can't remember yesterday, Phil. Your debut in the Masters. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. Nine bad, that, isn't it? Give <laughs> with a break. Leading by five breaks to three. Two racks to go for Dimitri Youngo. He wants to do what Mario he did at the start of the match. Break and run. Two consecutive racks, and then it's Hey Presto. He's through. This is a huge rack now, it really is. 6 3 or 5 4 is such a, <laughs> such a different scoreline, isn't it? 6 3 up in a race to 7, your big, big favourite. 5 4, it's all to play for. Mario's going to be happy because Dimitri doesn't have a shot on the lowest ball. That's the blue 2. Yes, it didn't make a lot of difference in the end, but the way of the the one and the six collided there and both went into opposite pockets. That was something. He could stand there all day and not do that again. Needs is to slow down. It's a very, very adventurous kick shot, that. Could have played a push out. It was after the break. So he, he certainly fancied something. Extension, please. See the potting angle. This is the problem here. He could hold the cue ball up to the top, but where's the two ball gonna go? Oh, did he try and swerve it in and pot it? He needs his two to hurry up. Wow. And that is very fortunate where that's finished. Looked like it was gonna sit over the side pocket, and it's just run onto the rail. He did, he tried to swerve that in. As you see, the two ball just roll onto that rail. Extension. Extension, please. This is a nasty position he's in now. Cutting this up the rail is a horrible shot. Look like there's a, an easy, obvious safety, so he might have to shoot this one. And so easy on this shot too to catch the far bump of the middle pocket on the way there. Can he cross bank it? That'll get the cue ball coming, he can. He's had a go, he's got it. Beautiful shot, he's played the cross bank. It's a big shot, but he knows this is a big rack. He knows if he can get on the hill here, he's created a big gap. Let's not forget he was 2-0 down. Yeah, everything about that cross double on the two was excellent. Even obtained some form of angle on the three. Getting very close to the hill, Cole. Yeah, he'd love to just to play this off one rail with a bit of right English. He's drawing it. Wow, OK. He 
could see just making sure he got that cue ball far enough away from the rail to leave a, a shot. Them replays are amazing, Phil. You can always see the cue ball bouncing along, can't you, before it makes contact. He'll cheat the pocket here, he'll play this seven into the rail a little bit and probably draw the cue ball straight back. That's what he did, purposely play it off the rail, plays a big pocket then and just give yourself a shot and this nine ball and you'll be on the hill. You know he was a little nervy on the nine ball in the previous rack. But the cue was delivered very authoritatively there. So Dimitri Ungo, after that slow start, hardly got a look in early on, now leads 6-3. Mario He in desperate trouble.
breaking on the hill. Leading by six racks to three. Youngo one rack away from making a winning debut in this fine tournament. Is he going to get a shot on this one ball? Looks like he's going to have home of shot, and he is. This is your chance. This is all you ask for in a game of pool. You're on the hill, and you get an open look at the lowest ball. This is your chance to book yourself into the next round. Just looking at the layout of the balls, there's no... There's no issues anywhere, so this is just a case of making sure you don't do anything silly. Keep very still on every shot. Try and give yourself hang as well. Oh my, my, wow, what happened there? Yeah, you've been fortunate, but that is worrying that. Didn't expect him to miss it by that much. Thought I was seeing things, Phil. Oh, man. Hmm. Well, Dimitri supplying his own commentary. Oh, man. Yeah, indeed. That's the kind of mistake you make when you need Orak for victory. And look at this. Could that be a turning point? Oh, delightful kick there from Mario, known as Panda on tour. This is a very, very difficult pot, though. He's got to play it with English. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he can just kind of up and down the table in between the eight and the nine, that big gap there. But the pot is just so much different in your mindset. You know, we've, we've, we've spoke about the fact that the pockets are now measuring four inches, not 4.5, and he's got to stay still. The mistakes come. Dimitri, you're going to get another goal, buddy. And it's an easier chance. Mario knows it was it was a chance, but it wasn't easy. But if you're going to win this type of event, well, they simply have to disappear. What an opportunity! <laughs> Will Youngo hold himself together or will the Swiss miss? Well, I don't think the Swiss will be missing this one, Phil. Just these three balls. And he will be delighted. He's never played in the World Pool Masters. So rightfully will have been very nervous. Mario was leading the start of this match 2-0. I'm sure he didn't think that this was going to be the outcome. These two balls. Cue ball needs to slow down. He's okay though. Extension, hold. So many twists in this match, but you have to say, for me, the the pivotal moment was that awful P safety shot on the two ball. What was he thinking? A little bit like the first match when Oliver missed a pink four in the side. Mario played a bad safety, and that can cost you matches. And it's cost him this one. DJ puts Mario in a spin. He is not the man. It's Dimitri Jungo who defeats the Austrian by seven rags to three. A popular score on that tonight on the opening night of the World Pool Masters.